Good morning, Bear Creek. What a beautiful day that the Lord has given us. We're so excited about you being here today just to, just to honor God. I hope the week has been great for you. I hope you can take today and make it special. And make it a special time for just you and God and for us as individuals to know how grateful we are just to be in a place like this, able to worship God and to encourage each other. Will you give it your all today in worshiping God? Will you please stand? We begin with our call to worship. I'm going to ask Sarah. She would lead us. Again, give it your all today. We come one and all to explore our spiritual heritage, realizing our unique identity. Isaiah's call to listen and look to the rock reminds us of our foundation in Christ. As stones, Let us reflect on our identity in Christ, opening ourselves to his teachings and united in worship. Good morning. Our opening hymn will be How Firm a Foundation, number 529. We will sing verses 1, 2, 3, and 5. How firm a foundation, ye saints of the Lord, is laid for your faith in his what more can he say than to you he hath said, to you who for refuge to Jesus hath led? Fear not, I am with thee, oh, be not dismayed, for I am thy God and will seated in the house of the Lord. Thank you, Tracy. I appreciate all of you and your great singing on today. Welcome again to Bear Creek United Methodist Church. This is a safe, inclusive faith community that's seeking and growing in Christ's love. As we come together, we, of course, want to continue to love God, serve each other, knowing that that's why God uh, put us here. Uh, please register your attendance. Let us know that you are here. It's always good to have you here and us staying connected. You can always email us at stayconnected@bearcreekumc.org, or you can text 832-773-4901. It is always, again, good to stay connected with you. Uh, 
please remind everybody that you see that we have uh, great Bible studies uh, for this fall. This fall, we have three of the Disciple Bible uh, classes set up. If you would like to go through the Bible, we're talking about a three-year course. You just start. Take it one day at a time, one week at a time, and study through the Word of God. We have a Sunday class, we have a Monday class, and a Wednesday class. So far, 40 of you have already registered. I applaud you for that. That is awesome. Thank you so very much. Now, now, please, please tell somebody else. Please tell somebody else so they can join you as well. We want to get as many people as possible uh, that's studying the Word of God together. Also, I want to say that uh, we met with the bishop on um, last Sunday, right, uh, Ron? It was the last Sunday night. Uh, we have uh, met because the United Methodist Church, the Texas Annual Conference, is going from nine districts to five districts. And those five districts now uh, will come together uh, for our annual conference, and it's a, it's a whole new structure. Well, what that means for us in the Southwest District is that we are now going to be combined with the North Central District. So the North Central District and our Southwest District will be joined together, and we are going to celebrate that here on September 24th. Love for all of you, not only to come, but since we are hosting, I hope that you would join in and make it a big, uh, welcoming, loving atmosphere for all the members of uh, the new Southwest District as they come here at Bear Creek. You've been chosen to be the host for those that will be coming from the Southwest as well as those for the first time coming from the Central North and being part of this great service. Uh, the bishop will be here. It's going to be an installation service. Uh, you're going to have to help me with this, uh, Moses, if I need to just get rid of it. What we want to do is we want to make sure uh, that we are welcoming them. So we'll be asking you to join our greeters. Some of you maybe have never been greeters, maybe never been uh, ushers. But if you, with that smile, and I'm asking only the people who smile. Okay? It's okay if you want to help somewhere else, but if you don't smile, we don't want you greeting. Does that make sense? I hope so. I, I know whenever I go to churches, when somebody go come on in. It just doesn't seem the same, okay? So I am asking if you don't smile as much, that's okay. There's always a place uh, for you to serve. Also, Sean is going to be working with the uh, service and the, the choir, I think. I'm not sure. Do you have a specific choir or are we going to be bringing people in? Okay, so we're going to be bringing people to sing as well. And I've, been, I, I've heard some of you that are not in the choir, and yet you have a beautiful voice. I know you do. I've been around you. So if, if you don't want to just sing every Sunday, but you feel like you want to use that voice, please check with Sean, and let's join in on the 24th and just make it where it's going to be a great day. I'm excited about it. It's, it's, I think it's an honor for us to host. You'll see John, he's doing some work around here, and I think uh, Sally with the trustees, we got a special day on September the 16th. We're going to all be here doing some, um, you know, sprucing up and just, uh, we're making a fall cleanup day. So thank the bishop for a fall cleanup day, right? We're going to have a fall cleanup day. For you that are here and maybe some of the things that just needs to be cleaned out in some of your uh, ministry areas, we also are going to have a dumpster out there. We're going to uh, make sure that there's room for us to take care of all of that as well. Thanks to Brian Weaver. We appreciate uh, him helping out with all of that. It is going to be a great day. I'm excited, the bishop excited, the new superintendent is excited, and I pray that you are as well. It's going to be a 3 o'clock service, so mark it on your calendar, a 3 o'clock service on September the 24th. Do you have it down? September 24th, a 3 o'clock service. We'll come back, and it's just going to be a great time for us to really make history. It will be the first time that this district will be together. Amen? Are you excited with me? Yeah, I am too. Thank you. Will you please stand? Please stand, look around, see who you haven't seen in a while. Introduce yourself to somebody maybe new, but look around and just say hello and catch up on them.
back. Please make your way back to your pew. I appreciate all of you just mixing. Stay standing if you don't mind. We are going to uh, affirm what we believe together here as we recite together and really, really mean uh, what is said in our Apostles' Creed. Will you lead us, please, Sarah? Believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who is conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Universal Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. It's prayer time. So smile. You don't have to just smile on the 24th, you know. You can smile every Sunday. I know this week has been tough for a lot of people. I've talked to a lot of people this week. Said, "Man, I'm so glad we made it through this week, but it's just been a tough week." So as we come together this morning, let us all remember that um, even when we have tough weeks, we're never alone. That we have a God that watches over us. We have a God that walks with us. We have a God that calls us to be in a loving relationship with each other and with him. So this week, as uh, we get ready to start another one, um, it's nice to see Cable Wolves back after a week or two gone. And uh, all of us keep uh, Ron Litt in, his, in our prayers as he goes um, into surgery on Tuesday. And for everyone else, it maybe um, has some medical doctor's visit this week let's keep everyone in our prayers so let us pray together oh gracious and loving God on this day in this place we thank you that we can be here and that we know that when we are here that you have come and joined us here that you uh, walk with us daily but never leave us so that when we walk through these doors and we come here specifically to praise you and worship you and glorify your name that you are here to hear us so we ask Lord this week that you be with each and every one of us continually as we heal as we hurt as we need comfort and then reach into the hearts of each and every one of us so that we too can reach out and do the same. Be healers, be comforters, be friends. We pray all of this in the name of your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. And now let us pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you, Reverend Ron. Alupi, if you don't mind joining me as we prepare for giving on today. Thank you so very much. I just thank God. Uh, as Ron was praying, I was thinking about everything that's going on, not just uh, locally, but uh, in our country and our world. And I pray that you, know, you just keep whispering a prayer for all of those that are in need, uh, whether, it's, um, whether it's the, um, the fires or whether it is the uh, flooding somewhere or whether it is the fighting somewhere or the shooting somewhere. I mean, it's a lot of pain. Lots and lots of pain. 
We're so blessed that God continues to surround us with his love and, and his peace and his joy. But in the midst of all, let's, let's make sure that we connect with those um, who are going through things that maybe we're not and um, to show that empathy that comes from being a child of God as well. Uh, Lupe, I appreciate you being back here. Lupe was taking care of her mom on last weekend and just, um, uh, you know, I miss her when she's not here. Um, Sometimes I feel like I do half the job because it's, it's one of those things. I, I, I know whenever we drive sometime and I'm driving places, I know I know where to go, but there are times that uh, whenever she's in the car with me, I go, do I turn here? And, um, and it's just that I feel like that's what happens in church sometimes. Whenever I'm, I'm saying things, I can, I can see her and she'll make just, just different things. I'm going like, oh yeah, it just keeps me on track. And when, she's not, when you're not here, I miss you. Though. So I want you to know that. As we give today, the scripture that's coming to mind, and I'll probably uh, write you about this too, because the scriptures that's coming to mind whenever I think about the finances of the church, it, it, it talks about uh, us not only um, carrying our, our load, because everybody has a certain responsibility. And that's what I feel like we do. We all have a load that we carry. I mean, it's like having a backpack. You need your backpack. There are things that you just need. But every once in a while, uh, we are asked to carry a burden or somebody's burden. And, and what happens in that case is every once in a while, our loads become too much for us. Have you ever seen that? Every once in a while, you're going through a little more than the norm. And someone comes along and says, hey, may I help you? Because you and I, we, we are able to carry our load. But then we end up taking on someone else's part of their load as well. I'm going to ask as we give today to think about it. Everybody's not in the same boat financially. Some people are, are really uh, doing well during this time, but some people are really suffering. And we know that, right? We, we see it. All we have to do is think about our, our partnership with Mesa and, and how many people actually are in need. And it keeps growing. It keeps growing because uh, things, things are still tough for many. As we look at our financial situation here at the church, it's the same thing. We got members at every possible financial tier. And what we want to do is we want to continue to give. Uh, but in these next couple of months, you'll be hearing us asking you to carry more of someone else's load as well just because we're not able to do it all uh, just with doing our part and so I appreciate you so very much as you pray and ask God what is God asking you to do at least in these next uh, four months to think about what we can do that will continue to help us to be financially stable God is a good God and God is doing great work here at Bear Creek uh, and we want to see that continue Will you allow yourself just to ponder on that as we pray today? Gracious and loving God, thank you. Thank you for how much you continue to bless us to do what we do spiritually as well as physically for individuals. Thank you for just the joy that we receive as we come together and knowing that we have an opportunity to give to make a difference as well. And so, God, as we think about what you would have us give today, touch our hearts, speak to us, and help us so that we can be generous in our giving and that we can listen to hear what you would have us do as our load, but also to help carry someone else's as well. We love you and we thank you for Bear Creek United Methodist Church. We thank you for its people. Thank you for the friendships. Thank you for this family. Continue to bless us so that we may be a blessing to our community and the world. We praise you that you take these gifts, multiply it, and use it for your glory, we pray in your son Jesus' name. And everyone said, amen. Remember, the Lord loves a cheerful giver, so as you give today, smile. Thank you.
Listen to me, you who look for righteousness, you who seek the Lord. Look to the rock from which you were cut and to the quarry which you were dug. Look to Abraham, your ancestor, and to Sarah, who gave you birth. They were alone when I called them, but I blessed them and made them many. The Lord will comfort Zion. He will comfort all her ruins. He will make her desert like Eden and her wilderness like the Lord's garden. Happiness and joy will found in her. Thanks and the sound of singing. Pay attention to me, my people. Listen to me, my nation. For teaching will go out from me, my justice as a light to the nations. I will quickly bring victory. My salvation is on its way, and my arm will judge the peoples. The coastlands hope for me. They wait for my judgment. Look up to the heavens and gaze at the earth beneath. The heavens will disappear like smoke, and the earth will wear out like clothing, and its inhabitants will die like gnats. But my salvation will endure forever, and my righteousness will be unbroken. The word of God for people of God. Thanks Thanks be be to God. Amen. You may be seated in the house of the Lord. Thank you, Sarah. I appreciate you so very much. Uh, uh, And I thank you. Uh, Janet, of course, will be signing for us. Choir, I want to say that was beautiful. Oh, I enjoy that. Thank you. It it helps me enjoy silence because it's, it's like nothing else to say. Just be amazed. I love it. This sermon today is about our spiritual heritage. Our spiritual heritage. Understanding where we came from helps us realize how special and how unique we each are, each is. Think about it. This sermon is about, or is entitled, Our Spiritual Heritage. And it can lead us to a stronger sense of who we are. Addressing uh, those who are pursuing righteousness Isaiah began this chapter, chapter 51, speaking as God's instrument with, listen to me, listen to me, pay attention. Uh, Teachers in the room understand that. Listen to me, pay attention to who you are. This is so exciting, and yet it was a needed reminder for the people of God in Isaiah's time. Isaiah is often quoted as, in the New Testament by the New Testament writers. He seemed to know more about Jesus' identity and the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ than any of the prophets. Gregory of Nisi, who lived in the fourth century, believed that the prophet Isaiah, quote, knew more perfectly than all others the mystery of the religion of the gospel. I want us today to focus on the instructions in Isaiah chapter 51 and verse 1. Listen to me, you who look for righteousness, you who seek the Lord. Look to the rock from which you were cut and to the quarry where you were dug. To the people of God in Isaiah's time, which was during the 6th century BCE, in the years just before the fall of the Babylonian Empire, and at a time when the prophet Isaiah believed that the people of God, that their suffering was coming to an end. Imagine these guys in exile and suffering. They needed hope. These individuals needed hope, and Isaiah was offering them. The best hope for people, the best hope for us, even as individuals, is to know our identity. Know who you are. And to be able to visualize it. Be able to visualize who you are to become. Because we are not there yet. Isaiah directed the people of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in verse 2 to first look to Abraham. Abraham is not only their father, but Abraham is our father of faith. Look to Abraham, your ancestor, and then look to Sarah. Look to Sarah who gave you birth. I love this. And then he says this. He says, explore the quarry, explore that hole from whence you were dug, from which you came out of. 
God wanted to remind them of how he blessed Abraham, who was a solitary man, but yet came the father of many nations. He wanted them to understand that God blessed Sarah, who was barren, and yet she gave birth. And if God did that for Abraham and for Sarah, then those are those that are in pursuit of righteousness, think about what God can do for you. Think about that. But I need you to know that Isaiah was not only pointing to pointing us to our ancestors, I want us to focus on the instructions that Isaiah has for us today. What is God saying to us today when God says, pursue the rock. Pursue the rock, the rock of God, and the quarry, the hole without water, that, those, those wells that were used for prisons. I want you to think about how you were rescued. Think about those two things. Look to the rock, ponder on the rock, and look to the quarry, ponder on that quarry. We are to ponder, which means that we are to think carefully, give some time, especially a noticeable amount of time to these two things. That's why I love the silence with the choir. All at once they're saying nothing else to say. It's just time to listen. Time to be in the moment. How much time are you willing to spend pondering on your identity? How much time are you willing to spend to think about who you are? The Living Bible writes, consider the quarry from which you were mined, M-I-N-E-D. Think about that. A lot of images come to mind there. The rock from which you were cut right right away as as Jen and I were talking we, we thought about being cut from or, or the chip off the old block right I mean how much are you like your parents I remember how they would look at my son buddy and and they would say his mother had nothing to do with it he looks so much like me how much are you to chip off the old block how much do you resemble you resemble that, that block, that stone. Let's ponder for a while. And then ponder the hole from which you were dug. How far have you come? This is where the testimonies come, where you hear people say that God took me out of the pit. God took me out of a, out of a hole. I know they would sing songs. He, he picked me up and he set me on a solid rock. Those kind of testimonies that, that helps an individual understand where you have come from. The prison that God took you out of. What were you bound to? What had you in shackles? The, the sin that God has forgiven you. Think about it. And then ponder on the rock. The word rock is translated by four Hebrew words, but only two of them is used metaphorically in a sense that relate, relates to God. Salah, which means to have a refuge and a safe place from enemies, how many of you see God as a safe place that can protect you? And also, Sura. Sura is, is, is meaning mighty one, strong. God is that one that you can lean on, that you can always depend on. And then in the New Testament, the Greek word Petra, which means rock, that Jesus used. Knowing who you are knowing who we are is so important 
Listen to Jesus' conversation with his disciples in the use of this word. In Matthew chapter 16, the International Children's Bible, I figure I'll try to make this as simple as possible. Let's go to as simple as it could be. The International Children's Bible makes it clear as it can be. It says Jesus went to the area of Caesarea Philippi. He said to his followers, I am the son of man. Who do people say I am? Every once in a while, do you ever ask that question? How do you see me? Who do people say that I am? Every once in a while, I ask those people around me, how do you see me? His followers told him. They said, people say. People say that you're John the Baptist. Mom, incorrect. (laughs) Others say that you are Elijah. Not right. And then some others say that you're Jeremiah or one of the prophets. Way off. (laughs) Do people really know you? Do they really know you? How would they describe you? you Jesus asked then and who do you say I am I understand what most people would say about me but who do you say what do you say about me Simon Peter was the one that answered you know Peter always speaks up (laughs) seemed to always be the first one like he doesn't have a filter And he says this, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Well, Jesus in verse 17 responded right away and said, you're blessed, Simon, son of Jonah. You're blessed, Peter, because listen to the next words. This is from the International Children's Version. I love this, Children's Bible. He said, no person taught you that. (laughs) Are you hearing me? No one can teach you who Jesus is. But Leo, you're telling us, Pastor, that we got to go to this Bible study and learn who Jesus is. No, no, no. You definitely want to study who Jesus is, but listen to what the Word says. No person taught you, he said, Peter. My Father in heaven showed you who I am. Remember I said last Sunday, I want you to have horizontal learning, which means get all the information and the facts, But then I need us to have vertical learning, and that learning can only come as we connect with God. Listen, no person taught you that. Jesus must be revealed to us. And Jesus can only be revealed to us by the Holy Spirit, by God, by God. And so he says this, So I tell you, Peter, He says, I'm going to tell you who you are, Peter. I'm going to tell you who you are. And he says, you are Peter. The Greek name Peter, like the Aramaic name Cephas, means rock. It means rock. Petros. Petros. A little rock. A pebble. He says, you, Peter, you're a rock. But you're a little rock. You see what Jesus is doing here? He's showing you why this is relevant for us. Jesus added, and I will build my church on this rock, Petra. Petra. The great rock, the solid rock. People want to debate and say is the church built on Peter the little rock or is the church built on Christ the solid rock that's a no brainer and yet we have fought throughout the century to wonder what rock we were built on we were built on the rock that can't be moved hello we were built on the rock and notice the writers and I love how the writers do this the writers in interpreting this in the New Testament they took the Greek masculine Petros for Peter 
as a piece of the rock, as a, as a stone, and then they used the Greek feminine rock, Petra, for Jesus to say that Peter came out of the rock. There is no woman going to come out of man. Is that smart? I thought so. Jesus is this great rock, and you and I are a chip off the great rock, a cut from Jesus. Jesus is the foundational rock. Our identity comes from that rock, Jesus Christ, a massive rock, a rock that can't be moved, a rock that cannot be shaken. I know we all get shaken sometime, but we're a little rock. <laughs> I want you to get this. In Hebrews chapter 12, verse 26 through 27, we don't have that one up there. I just got this one last night. Once more, he says, I will shake not only the earth, but also shake the heavens. The words once more indicate the removing of all that can be shaken. That is, created things. Everything created will be shaken so that what cannot be shaken may remain. You and I have a part of us, our identity, that cannot be shaken. Have you noticed it? Whenever you've gone through things so much, you can be shaken, and then all at once you fall right back and go, no, when I realize who I am, I realize I cannot be shaken. When we realize our identity is in Jesus Christ, we realize that we are on the solid rock. You and I have been mined, cut from Christ. You and I have an identity that cannot be shaken. Christ alone, he is the rock. Christ alone is the foundation of the church. In 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 11, it says the foundation has already been built no one can build another foundation. The foundation that has already been laid is Jesus Christ. And then Peter writes in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 4, Come to the Lord, he says. Come to the Lord. The living stone rejected by people. I love that. He calls the stone living. The living stone that's rejected by people as worthless, but chosen by God as valuable. If the stone is valuable, you are valuable. Know your worth. Know your worth here. He said, he said, come living stones. You're the living stones, meaning the little stones, and let yourself be used in building the spiritual temple. This world need, it needs us. <laughs> It needs us. It needs a place to run into. It needs a place that would say, hey, this is a place of hope, and that's already within us. We're building this temple, you and I. It's not these bricks. You're the church. You are the living stones that's building up the spiritual temple so that people can run into. We are the holy priest that's offering sacrifice. That's who we are. And we do it through Jesus Christ. For the scripture says, I have chosen a valuable stone. Jesus being valuable. And in Christ, you and I are valuable. To be the cornerstone. Jesus is the cornerstone, it says. And I love this. In verse 6, Peter says, Whoever believes in him will never be disappointed. Never be disappointed. You can always trust that God will come through for you. This stone is of great value for you who believe, but for those who do not believe, the scripture says, the stone that the builders rejected as worthless turned out to be the most important of all. And it often becomes a stumbling block for individuals. This little stone, our identity lies in that cornerstone. As we think about our spiritual heritage, as I bring this to a close today, the promise that God gives us in Isaiah is this. Likewise, I, God, will comfort Zion. 
comfort all her mounds of ruins. I'll transform her dead ground, her desert, into Eden, her moonscape into the garden of God, a place filled with exuberance and laughter, thankful voices and melodic songs. After pondering about who we are in Christ, let's Let's accept God's promise for ourselves. Let's accept that God is creating a new Eden for us. Let's accept that God is creating a new Jerusalem for its new humanity. Isaiah said it in verse 3, and then John wrote it in Revelation, chapter 21, verse 2. John said this, I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem coming down out of the earth from heaven. You see, our promise from God lies in our identity in Christ. Don't stop pondering who you are. Don't stop pondering that you are in Christ, that you are cut from the rock, that you are solid. Your identity is solid, and it cannot be shaken. Whatever it is around you that's not like you, it will be shaken, and that's good. Because who we are not will not go in to that holy city. Only our true self, our true identity in Christ will be with us forever so don't stop pondering who you are and from where you come from your identity your identity it comes from the rock and that rock is Jesus amen let us pray gracious and loving God thank you thank you for giving us a spiritual heritage that is solid even though we know what may have come from our parents, what may have come from those that have gone before us, God, we realize that it all started with you. You breathed life into us. You breathed that identity into us. And who we are are children of God. Help us never to forget that. When we doubt ourselves, please continue to remind us and help us to ponder on who we are and never forget where you brought us from. Please pray this prayer with me. Say, God, thank you for who I am. Help me to never forget from whence I've come. To be grateful for who I am. In Jesus' name, amen. If you don't have a church home, I would love to be your pastor. This is a great place to, to continue to learn and connect and really know without a shadow of a doubt that Jesus Christ is the solid rock. We don't do anything, anything, for other, any other reason than to praise our Lord and our King and to serve God. Let's keep Christ before us. Amen. Will you please stand? You can always text me at 832-773-4901 or you can walk up here today. I'd love to take you and say welcome to Bear Creek United Methodist Church. Let's sing. Our hymn of invitation today is hymn 361, Rock of Ages Cleft for Me. Left for me, let me hide myself in thee. Let the water and the blood from thy wounded side which flowed.
Lord, we have seen the double cure. Save from wrath and make me pure. Not the labors of my hands can fulfill thy lost demands. Could my zeal no respite know? Could my tears forever flow? All for sin could not atone. Thou must save and thou alone. Nothing in my hand I bring. Simply to the cross I cling. Naked come to thee for dress. Helpless look to thee for grace. Foul I to the fountain fly. Wash me, Savior, or I die. While I draw this fleeting breath, when mine eyes shall close in death, when I soar to worlds unknown, see thee on thy judgment throne, rock of ages cleft for me. Let me hide myself in thee. Amen. Amen. You may be seated in the house of the Lord. Thank you so very much, Zach. That's beautiful. Beautiful. Well, we have two families here that like to be a part of Bear Creek United Methodist Church. How do you feel about it? This is the Ziegler family. This is Dave and his wife, Melinda. And we have the Wells family. Uh, this is Dennis and his wife, Maria. And I'm um, just excited that you are part, uh, wanting to become a part of Bear Creek. I want to say that Dennis is joining. Uh, Maria is going to be uh, my um, Catholic member. I told her we have a Jewish member. Now we have a Catholic <laughs> member. So I love that. Uh, God is so good uh, uh, to us, to so you are here, and I appreciate it. Now, we have already uh, asked you questions. Have you been baptized? And we, we like to confirm that by, first of all, asking you, do you renounce all of the wickedness, all of the evil, all of the uh, injustices in this world, and do you repent of your sins? Okay. And do you also, do you believe that God has given you the power that you can overcome all of the oppression, all of the Eve, all of the injustices in this world? And do you give your life to God? Do you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior and put your entire trust in Him? Yes. Amen. Okay, well, you've all been baptized, right? Okay, we always believe, right? In the Methodist Church, you only need to be baptized one time. Why? It took the first time. We know that God did his part. No matter whether you were baptized as a child or as an adult, it took the first time. And so as a member of Bear Creek United Methodist Church, we like to ask you these five questions. If you would support the church, support the church, first of all, in worship. And will you be praying for the church? Will you come and join us and worship on a regular basis? Okay. Will you also be in um, a follow-up, be in the small group, uh, get in a small group where you can grow and continue your journey in becoming a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ? Yes. All right. And will you be a giver? Will you give of your tithe and your offering in supporting the church here? Yes. Okay. And will you be a server? Will you be someone who serves in the church? Now, let me say this. I can qualify. Melinda's already. She is our new librarian. So she's already... <laughs> Yeah, Amber has handed it off, okay? Thank you so very much. She's already involved in working. Uh, we're going to find out where Dave wants to. Da da Dave can play a, what, what, what's the, it's a mean what? Trumpet. trumpet, mean trumpet. He can play a mean trumpet, but we'll see what, where, where God's going to use him. Dennis, Dennis is already ready. He, he is uh, transferring from St. Paul, and he was, he was one of the ushers. Uh, at St. Paul, plus he volunteer, I mean, lead volunteers like you wouldn't believe, um, and that was uh, with what organization you were with now? United with United Way. So I think we have a, um, how did we say we were going to call that? A uh, volunteer coordinator. <laughs> 
I've been looking for one for six years. So very excited about that. I think the last time it was Treva, Treva did that for us for um, Harvey. I think it was Harvey. She did an awesome, awesome job. And so I thank God and I look forward to uh, for you as a uh, uh, volunteer coordinator and just working with us. And Maria, Maria and I have been in Bible studies like since... Um, 2000 something there um, met her when all the kids were going to Wesley Academy so I uh, thank God for Maria being involved and then will you be not only a server but will you be an inviter will you continue to invite people uh, to Bear Creek and tell others about Jesus Christ all right well we have two words for you Welcome. come on give God praise thank you so very much if you guys can just come with me okay. and we'll We'll make sure and have everybody welcome you. Okay. Thank you all so very much. You may be seated. Thank you so very much. I'm excited. God is a good God. Amen. I love all that God is doing in our midst. I uh, love when God, but God bring uh, new people as well. So we'll, um, we're looking forward to all that God is going to do with you. I want you for these next couple of minutes here to just ponder. Ponder on the rock. And ponder on where God has brought you as we enjoy this postlude by Martha. Please stand. Thank you so much, Marva. I think about this week, and um, I believe God is saying, I, uh, to me at least, I, I pray for you as well to, to maybe a journal or write down, somewhere where you can write down what comes to mind as you're pondering your identity in Christ this week. Maybe something that stands out to say about who you are. Just write it down. Write it down as you go through your week. What's the first thing that comes to mind as a child of God? What comes to mind as a uh, person, as a child, not only of God, but being a part of that rock of where God has brought you from? 
Do you feel like an overcomer? Write that down. Are you grateful just for who you are? Whatever it is, please start writing those things down. Will you do that this week? Our prayer partner is going to be here to pray with you. I look forward to seeing you. Next week, don't forget the guys. They're still going to barbecue for you. So if you haven't gotten it in, uh, get your order in uh, today. But go today remembering who you are. Your chip off the rock. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. God bless you. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Have a great week.